my thoughts exactly. Let's do this. Today marked my halfway point, raise the roof, of lambing being completed. So what I thought I'd do is just take you through my lambing protocol and the steps and the steps I do when lambing begins, what that all looks like and what the barn looks like. Because I cedar my ewes, I, I know for the, for the most part when they're gonna start popping and I start setting up my claiming pens probably a few days a few days before and only a few maybe maybe three or four because I don't want to lose any bunk space because I need the bunk space for the use those lambing pens they are they're made up of panels they're called they're made by Marweld they're an economy panel and they're lightweight I guess lengthwise is five feet and then um, width-wise is four feet. So they're four by five, each of those pens. I really love them. I use them and I swear by them. I start at the end closest to the utility room, so to speak. And that's just for my observation and that's just the way I've always done it. And then as they lamb, those, those pens get moved towards where those ewes actually lamb. The ewes have a, a big pen and I let them stay in the common area to do all their lambing, to nest and to circle and to paw and to find their area because that's that's what they need. They're very instinctual animals. So I try to keep it very true to their nature as much as I can. I let the ewes drop the lambs in place and then I hopefully for the most part the ewe will follow the lamb as I walk backwards. Not all the time, sometimes it's a chase game. I check her teats, I strip the ewe, make sure there's milk. Uh, this group so far I've had two uh, second time lammers, so that's kind of bad, that have blind blind teats. So one blind teat, which really sucks because I spent all that time raising them for replacements and then that happens. So whether they picked up mastitis after, I have no idea. And they stay in that claiming pen for 24 hours, that's kind of the goal. If they're a triplet or a quad and, and there's some weak doers, I tend to let them stay in a bit longer. If, if I have the space and if I have the time, I let them stay in longer. I supplement anything that looks questionable, especially in the cold weather. They have to have colostrum. Colostrum, colostrum, colostrum. And just as soon as you think you've given them enough colostrum, go fill your bottle again, because you haven't. hour mark I process the lamb so I tag them I weigh them I give them a selenium injection I do they put the elastic band on the tail I mark them so they match their mum so if they run away I know who is who and then I record anything any observation that I find I record Once the 24 hour period is over, I start tearing down those, those claiming pens. At the spot that I started, I start tearing those down. 
or I have an empty pen waiting. So this time I was lucky I had room on the back side of where my lambing jugs were. And I used that as my first catch pen of all the ones I tagged. So I filled that with 25 U's and their babies. And once that's done, I start uh, tearing down the claiming pens and keep building them on the other side. So you're essentially leapfrogging over, over the set that's built. We do water twice a day. I used I used some of the suggestions I got. I did not take the time, and I should have, to find the hangers for my water pails, so that didn't happen. However, I did talk to a producer, and they suggested get less pails and feed them twice a day, and then and you can pull them out and keep them clean. And what I did do is I actually I got a hose, so. Wow, that was smart. And that's been a huge, that's like the greatest thing I did. This whole lambing was put a hose into my barn. Uh, so yeah, water water twice a day and and the, the feeding, of course, the, the ewes and the claiming pens that are right up to the bunk, I don't have to worry about them because it's easy to feed. The ones on the back side of those pens are a little trickier because the TMRs in the bunk, I gotta take a shovel and actually shovel it up and put a little scoop in their pen and then that sucks because they paw at it and it gets all over the pen and then I gotta bed the pen again. Always bedding the pens. I bed pens to keep those pens dry, especially with these cold and warm days and really, really cold nights, you get those swings, which is the absolute worst for lambing. Once the lambing's done, because it's such a tight group, I actually might clean it out, get rid of all that birthing fluid, get rid of all that moisture and, and all that excess straw that I bedded, and just start them fresh. So I think that's about it. It's been, it's been a crazy week, but I love the fact that I, I've lambed a lot. I'm gonna be lambing a quarter of my flock out in probably eight days, which, which is, which is okay. Uh, I, I had a mental breakdown at about day four, just going on uh, not very much sleep. All in all, it's been, uh, it's been one really bad day thus far. I'm only half done. But having your systems in place definitely helped. Having stuff organized and just taking that week before helps my brain even just focus and know that, that this is the mission this week. You need your systems and you need your support around you because you're tired. It's like having a newborn. It's like having 136 new moms and new and newborns. So you're dealing with a lot of stuff. That is lambing in a nutshell here. I'm still learning stuff. Every time I lamb, I, I've, I see new things and have new issues. I think of something to do a little bit better. Lambing is the one part of it once they drop into that big, into that pen with the mums and the babies, you have to have eyes in the back of your head because that's when the real observation starts happening. You have to make sure you don't see lambs start to start to go backwards, start to thin out and get get gaunt looking, sunken in eyes, hunched over. You got to get in there. You got to get them. A, you got to get them on a bottle. Uh, just I just use Grover Milk Replacer. It's just a supplementation. If they're on mum, they're probably gonna do okay, but that's what I do. I take the bottle around and just make sure even the older ones are still doing okay because when you have quads and triplets, I should be pulling them off. They should be on a machine and I just am not equipped for it yet. So I really have to go back to the drawing board and see if that's something that I should be looking at doing. It's just another thing that I didn't want to do, but when you're having all those multiples, it's something you really seriously have to consider because 
it's a it takes a long time going through with a bottle and just picking out which lambs look like they need it that's all i got thanks for watching i am over on snapchat and instagram i had an, a bunch of new followers this week so thanks for coming over there and feel free to drop me direct messages on facebook or on instagram or well, snapchat snapchat's just great for conversation so so if you guys are over there and you want to have a conversation or ask me questions or you want to put co comments or questions below or stuff that you do or that you figured out that really really works well at lambing time add it to the comments below so other people can read it and learn and do better because we all know that we learn little tricks and hacks and and better ways to do things from other people that's how i i legit learned from other people how to do this job and I want to just share with you guys the stuff that works and the stuff that does not work. If there's any suggestions or comments of, of what you want to see, please put that down there too. This is going to be a long one to edit. And uh, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great evening. Take care. <laughs>